Hi everybody, I'm, uh, I'm Barish Mitra, founder and CEO of Blippa. If you guys are expecting a Google Glass demo, I hate to disappoint you and Arda. Uh, it's a beta stage product and we had something fascinating built for you guys, but uh, the device is giving rebooting issues. Um, unfortunately, I have to show it in Adweek New York for the first time next week, so you guys are going to miss out on it. I'm wearing it for aesthetic reasons because it's relevant to some of the topics I'm going to speak about. I'm just trying to show off. So um, we're going to talk about can augmented reality-led behavior lead to true singularity. I'm reading this topic for the first time myself. Um, this is going to take me to the whole concept uh, where I see it, uh, of my version of it called blended reality. So we're going through a very interesting phase in history where people are sharing information more than ever before. Um, there's a major technological convergence, right? Processors have become extremely smart. People are able to process tremendous amount of information. But I don't know if you know, but the fact remains that Human intelligence actually hasn't improved at all in the last two to 3,000 years, uh, to the point where actually there's some research that humans were uh, much smarter during, uh, in early history, uh, including in, in Persian civilization and Egyptian civilization, because uh, people were original thinkers. They were solving real-life, everyday problems. Uh, and what we are doing is we are, of course, trained in a certain way and we do things as technology drives us or as the society tells us. So I'm not comparing that we are any lesser, but at no point let's just presume that we've, as species, in our thinking capacity, uh, moved way forward. What has really happened is technology has moved and processing power, which is beyond our brain capacity, has moved so much forward that we're able to take better decisions and uh, understand things better. So what's, what's happening is the lag between what people think and how they act is continuously shrinking, right? So a big uh, leap in this whole technology moving forward is, of course, your mobile phone, which you all have, uh, at least one or two in your pocket, and, and your person on the move. And you're constantly making decisions about buying a pizza or doing some shopping or booking some tickets, messaging your friends. These are uh, outputs of mobility and instantaneous information exchange. And that is happening because you've got a tremendous processing power in your pocket. Uh, and by default, human behavior wants to connect with each other. And, and we think that we are all super smart, super connected with everybody, which is, which is really, really good. But truly, where, from where I see it, what's going to happen is it is not about being smart or having tremendous processing power, which makes the world move forward. It's about access to facts and how you join those facts and combine them and make good ideas. Uh, it is all about ideas, and what happens is with improved processing power, with improved connectivity, with improved communication among people, which is all these technology infrastructures are providing us, we are actually making quicker, quicker decisions and forming brilliant ideas, and of course, economy and all those things are growing. So we will... I foresee we will reach a stage where, you know, machines, humans, I'm a big fan of Judgment Day, Terminator, and uh, all these kind of movies, where uh, there will be tremendous amount of intelligence. Uh, we've, I'm sure big data has been covered as a topic in today's, uh, today's many sessions. There is tremendous amount of data we are sharing. It's all being captured, and we'll be able to make really well-informed decisions half through our own insight and half through what the machines tell us. Uh, we may not like it, but 
philosophically, but trust me, I think, I think it's, not, it's not all bad news. There's nothing to be alarmed about it. it it's, it's pretty much a storage retrieval system where tremendous amount of information is stored all in the cloud, and we are constantly relying on that information to take everyday decisions. How does my core topic, which is augmented reality, fit into all this? I'm going to come back a bit, which is in today. I went too much uh, into the future. Um, so today, we all are using phones. And phones have almost become an extension uh, of, our, of ourselves, uh, of our bodies. Like, to, I'll explain how. Uh, but when phones came into the picture, we, it, it was pretty much a device we, which we held next to our ears, right? It was primarily a com verbal communication device. Uh, and this, then SMS messaging took over, uh, and the phone moved uh, from our ears uh, right in front of us, uh, and we started typing. And we continuously exchanged a lot of short text messages. It became a cultural phenomena. And now, due to evolution of uh, digital photography, Instagram, QR codes, stuff like that, the new well-defined behavior is people using their camera. So phone moved from here to here, and now it's all about there. Uh, it, it's a very well-formed behavior, very well-established behavior, that people do not hesitate to interact with the real world using the camera uh, of their phones. And we've got, already got very well-established platforms, uh, like Shazam, where you are, it's, it, it's a listening phenomenon. People can find out what's going on on TV or what songs you're listening to. We've got touch-based phenomena where near field communication, you can touch things and get access to a huge amount of data, whether it's about payment or ad or checking into your hotel, etc. Last bit, which is a topic relevant to me, is the eyes. The visual cue of the world is significantly bigger than any other cue. I mean, right now, I can, you can all hear me as a, a single voice, but I'm sure subconsciously you are able to see 1,000 unique points with your vision. And, and vision, of course, is a tremendous gateway to the world. It's one of the most important senses. Uh, and, and I believe that vision-based technologies is going to, of course, redefine uh, human behavior and how we access information. Uh, and that's where our business model uh, comes into play. And predecessors like Microsoft Snap Tags and QR codes have been good, strong foundations into creating this bridge into what we're going to define it as augmented reality. So. That's where us, that's Blipper Lower, comes into the picture. So many of you think of augmented reality. Everybody has their own definitions. Like, if I put it simply, it's pretty much holding your phone or camera or your computer lens over any real world scenario and getting some digital information on top of it. That's a very simple definition. But my belief is it's being really misused. It's, it's quite a nerdy term. Uh, professionals in this room will probably use it a lot because you really understand it, but my mom has no clue what augmented reality means, and I don't think she will ever have. So we as a business model, we took a view that we're going to move away uh, from this keyword. This keyword almost needs a behavior representation, and our business model is to create a global behavior phenomena where we, bl where we bridge the physical world and the real world. I mean, Istanbul is an amazing city of bridges. So here's the world we live in. It's not going anywhere, right? We live in this planet. We're going to touch and feel objects. We're going to breathe. We're going to eat and drink things and see things. And at the other end, digital revolutions keep happening, right? There is Facebook. There's Twitter. There's YouTube. There's coupons. There's 3D printers. There's 3D animation. Something more even amazing is going to come out, which we haven't even discussed yet. Blipper's phenomena is Blipper wants to be the bridge between the physical world and the digital world. And there is a lot of opportunity of connecting the two, and I'm going to discuss how, how it's done. 
But all the brands and publishers and end users who we are working with, they, they call this behavior as blipping. Uh, and the end content as blip. You, you pretty much blip to buy, or you blip to watch a video, or you blip to redeem a coupon, or you blip to pose with a celebrity, or you blip to find a store, anything. Pretty much point your phone on any physical object. It could be any form of above-the-line media, a book, or a CD, or an outdoor ad, or actual physical building. And you get digital interactions on top of it. And, and what you get could be valuable. It could be something basic information, or it could be something pretty useful, uh, some form of engagement or a game or something which uh, you will rejoice. So if I break the blipping as a behavior into three chapters, is pretty much unlock the physical world, discover great content, and measure. So this, this part of the conversation is more targeted at marketers and brand owners. So what are the... What, what, what are the areas in the physical world uh, we come across on a day-to-day -day basis? We come across media, of course. We, we see newspapers, magazines, uh, pretty much all forms of press materials, brochure. Uh, and we are continuously unlocking tremendous amount of content uh, on that physical world, to the point where actually Blipper uh, Today, in fact, went live with the local newspaper in, in Turkey called Milliet. Uh, and from today onward, it goes totally interactive. I'll show you a demo in a moment. Then we can, of course, unlock digital content from uh, catalogs, uh, which is still out there. And many of you might think it's dying, but it's, it's, it's still a very relevant business model. We might uh, unlock digital content from goods. Uh, you consume tremendous amount of F FMCG goods every day, uh, uh, from cereals to crisps to uh, drinks, ketchup, cheese, etc. Bus shelters, outdoor ads, we are surrounded by it. We cannot walk on the planet in store. We cannot walk pretty much without seeing such, such signal. On random goods like even tattoos and bank notes and T-shirts and stuff like that. So. These are, the plat these are the areas where you can unlock content from, but what would you do? You discover with Blipper spontaneous mobile experiences. And that could be anything from a video of Justin Bieber talking to you about his new album, and you can actually take a virtual picture with him, or able to buy things straight from a media, what we call ma many publishers and brand owners are using something called Blip to Buy. You, you, you're reading Vogue magazine, ladies in the room, uh, L magazine, you blip it, and you pretty much buy what you like, or you can even virtually try things on. You are able to virtually uh, try on uh, nail varnishes and stuff like that. That's possible. I'm going to show it to you how. Uh, or uh, even drive a lot of engaging content. This was one of the campaigns we did with Barack Obama's 2012 election campaign, where you could virtually high-five Obama only after you've paid $5. Uh, to his, to his campaign fund. So uh, you can also drive dynamic real-time experiences. So when you blip something, you could get live uh, bus, bus route or metro route stations, stock market data, pretty much anything. Some of you might think that uh, it is a gimmick. Uh, and, and I believe that, all right, everything in the world has uh, good users and gimmick users. I mean, if you notice, like 90% of great videos on YouTube are gimmicks. So who said gimmick is bad? I, I'm from the school of thought gimmick is sometimes good. It keeps us happy and engaged and entertained. And lastly, um, quite a phenomena is coming down to the issue of big data. Never before in history, all these physical interactions with the physical world has been recorded. So today, marketers are getting tremendous meaningful data about who's blipping, where they are blipping, in what location, uh, for how long. This is a Justin Bieber case study. I have permission to share this case study, where uh, around 829,000 unique interactions happened around the world. As you can see, the hotspot that 
uh, the, the whole planet is almost gone uh, orange colored there. On an average, users spend uh, approximately three minutes, uh, which is phenomenal amount of engagement uh, on a CD cover. I'm going to skip through uh, some of the case studies here. This is with Heinz Ketchup. Again, uh, a Heinz Ketchup bottle is blippable. Uh, 419,000 blips. I think this is a few months old with 125,000 people blipping. Average blips per person, 3.3. Um, and again, you are able to download recipes straight from your ketchup bottle. This was a, a game which uh, you could unlock a game from a five gum pack. You blip a five gum pack and you get uh, a game. And if you score above a certain score, Wrigley's five gum would give you prizes, uh, something along those lines. And, and this is just a publisher. For publishers in this room, um, as a behavior, this has been extremely uh, successful in the publishing medium where, uh, to some extent, 10 to 15% of your readership and circulation uh, converts into a blippable behavior and actually starts engaging with your content on a day-to-day on a -day basis. This is a very interesting statistic where how uh, people engage with a non-augmented reality-based traditional above-the-line media. So on an average, this is a report by Comcast, on an average, you spend less than a minute on an on-pack product. You almost spend between one to three seconds on a street billboard in terms of engagement. And on a press ad, you spend around maximum 15 to 30 seconds attention span. That very medium, when you actually use an AR platform like Blipper, that very medium converts significantly better, and people spend up to three minutes on that very medium, which is, which is phenomenal. So, of course, many, many leading brands are, are, uh, are doing this uh, on, on a day-to-day -day basis. It's becoming a global phenomena. And right now, blipping is a behavior. We've taken the branded route because it is so new, it is so revolutionary, that if I told you today on the top of Empire State Building and shouted that, guys, blip, this is really cool, it's going to take me a lot of time and convincing and many years to get you guys on board into this behavior. So we went with the model of getting key influencers worldwide, uh, publishers and brand owners, to drive this momentum. Uh, and soon we'll be launching something which we call peer-to-peer -peer blipping, where you'll be able to tag and blip things and exchange messages on products and stuff like that uh, very coolly. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to avoid to give away the business idea. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch over and show you guys uh, a few demos of some of the current campaigns. Uh, have a feel for yourself, what it looks like. Let me see where the cable is. All right, so that's uh, the Blipper application. It um, launches, and it, of course, needs data connection to work. Uh, it can recognize up to a half a billion images under 300 milliseconds. So you start blipping, and it, it starts tracking things in the real world, pretty much. If I, if I put my hand, it's going to start tracking it. Pretty basically, it's looking for blippable objects. So this is um, today's. Uh, Milliet newspaper, uh, and you can see the Blipper logo right at the top. And uh, pretty much when you blip it, let me blip it actually properly. Sorry. I hope I have connectivity here. So uh, it, it basically shows a demo video of how, how the whole uh, Milliot campaigns is going to work. And it will have many other, many other blippable sections throughout the newspaper, 
where uh, you can blip different sections and great, get great digital content. So this is a 3D planning of a building uh, which is relevant to this news. I'm not able to follow the news, it's in Turkish, but you guys will get it better. Uh, another good campaign is uh, uh, Pepsi Max. Uh, every Pepsi Max in Britain actually has a blipper logo on it. The reason the blipper logo gets on everything, not because we recognize the logo, it's just a consumer education piece. Exactly like you say that like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter, the brands are saying basically blip our products. So when you, when you blip the Pepsi Max bottle, it recognizes the logo or the whole bottle. Uh, and as you can see, the B appears. It's pretty much retrieving the campaign-related stuff out of it. Uh, and this is a magician called Dynamo. And he's, he, was, he will pretty much show live uh, magic tricks straight out of the bottle. Uh, and he's, he shows new tricks every time you show, uh, every time you blip the bottle. And, and the content keeps changing. It's totally dynamic. Brands are, almost, brands are almost treating their products as a new domain name. You know, why do I have to go to Google or uh, Pepsi.com when the product itself can talk back to the user and give new relevant content to whatever is relevant in their marketing initiative right now live, straight from the source. So that's, that's, what, that's what the phenomena is all about. Um, this is a very successful campaign in, um, at, with L'Oreal in New York. Uh, this, this appeared in Vogue. Uh, and 250,000 women in America tried this, some men as well. Um, and pretty much from the ad, uh, which is the paper ad, you could, you could try on nail varnish. People in the room do, if you think it wasn't possible, uh, it is. Uh, you, you put your hand underneath this and you see what happens. It saves women a lot of time. A lot of time, trust me. So um, now I, I have these uh, nail varnishes on me and I can clearly position it. And you see all the campaigns are so different, but it's a single browser. It's just driving tremendous creativity for the brands and driving a whole new digital revolution. It doesn't end there. Now see what happens. I'm not just happy with one shade here. I can choose from 40 different shades. Uh, my color is more pink. Uh, and and you, can, you can enjoy this. So what did L'Oreal get out of this? You know, 40 different shades. They're not going to manufacture 40 different shades in equal amount. Um, with the data from this campaign, they figured out which were the 10 most tried shades, and they started stocking retail stores accordingly. That's how the intelligence was used in this very campaign. I'm going to wrap up pretty soon. Let me just show you a couple of more demos. This is a, we have a partnership with a Macmillan Book Publishers. All their books are interactive now via Blipper. Uh, and when you actually blip the book, it um, it gives a very scary content. I mean, it has really scared people, and they have nightmares when they see this. The book is called Reviver. It's about bringing dead people back. Uh, and you can see how the scene and the setting is set for the end user. It's not just about reading the cover. You're already in the zone that uh, this is really, really scary stuff. And, and, and from, a, from a, a technology point of view, it, it's an extremely scalable model. Uh, you can pretty much recognize everything. You can, you can move things around. You can even drop things, I think. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, and and, and keep, you can keep engaging with it even at a pretty uh, far off distance. Um, book tickets uh, and, and things like that. I'm not going to show you. I'm not going to show you anymore. I'm going to wrap up. So where I was going with this is we uh, are in the, in the middle of digital revolution, but still the world we live in is very, very relevant. Blipper's model is we want to be the bridge between the physical and digital. 
We're going to, we have started this revolution with above-the-line media and products in the real world, but soon we want to make everything interactive. Because every object in this world has its own static truth, right? I mean, you know this is a TV, but what model, whatever it is. We want to see a world where you point at things and you exactly understand what it is rather than you describe. Imagine how Google works today. It's completely dependent on the description of your keywords. And your keywords is your perception of the world. What if, what if you're describing it wrong? So every product, everything we see has an absolute truth. And if we want to reveal that truth. That's one of the core part of the business models. But we're getting there right now. We started with the advertising revolution. So you tweet, uh, you've been Facebooking, you've been Googling, and we really hope you'll be blipping soon. Thank you very much.